Hi, I'm John Narrow, and welcome to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast. If you're feeling stuck in your career and overwhelmed by what steps to take, I can help you. As an executive and career transition coach, I help my clients prepare, position, and promote who they are and what they do to show up and find a job they love or love the job they have. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Today is episode 36. It is called Leading with Belief, Making it Happen. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about mindset and how our thoughts create very specific actions for us that ultimately create the results we either want or sometimes hold us back from getting them. Now, if you have not had an opportunity to listen to the previous episode where I interviewed one of my coaching clients, Amy Landry, just stop this and go back and take a listen to that. Amy's resilience in navigating her job search through the pandemic And all of the things that she did to come from a place of value and service to people in her network as she was also actively looking for a new job is a story, trust me, you need to listen to it. There are so many good takeaways and tangibles and learning points about how Amy not only just built her mid-career GPS, but how she showed up in the process of doing all of it. So I want you to go back and take a listen to that. Now, if you are not part of my private Facebook group, it's called Your Mid-Career GPS on Facebook. I want you to go there, answer the membership questions, and come right on in. It's an amazing group of people. Amy is in there. There's a lot of other people in there as well. And just so much really great information and knowledge being discussed and shared. So come on over and join the group. The other thing is I do have a little bit of exciting news to share with you, and certainly more will be coming up in the next few weeks, but my second book, which is called Your Mid-Career GPS, Four Steps to Figuring Out What's Next, is at the publisher. And it's being laid out right now. I am so excited that I am going to have so much more to share with you about this. But June has been a month for me where I have been cranking out a lot of stuff and getting a lot of things done. And I hope you are having some great productivity successes as well. Again, when we are stressed and overwhelmed and thinking about how the heck am I going to get all of this stuff done, it really comes back to our mindset, our attitudes, our thoughts on these situations that really help us show up to get the stuff done that we want. Look, I'm not Superman. You're not Superwoman, Superman either, but we try. If you care deeply about the things that you do, and especially if you are a heart-centered leader, you want to be there for everyone and everything. Saying no is a word that doesn't come easily to the front of your mouth. And when it does, you probably still try to choke it back from saying it because you don't want to let anybody down or you don't want to disappoint somebody. The truth is we cannot be everything to everyone. It's a great thought, but it's also unrealistic. And when you are navigating to whatever is next in your career, whether you're unemployed and you're actively looking for a job, you're in a job you're not happy with, or you're feeling undervalued and underutilized, or maybe just not satisfied and not really happy with the kind of things you're doing day to day. This whole process in building a mid-career GPS to whatever is next can be a little frustrating. You might be thinking it's not happening or you see other people's success and you go, well, it's working for them. It just never works for me. What we're going to talk about today hopefully will help you shift some of those, those thoughts 
Now, I want to be really clear. When asked the question, can you just think about it and create success? My answer is always no. Thoughts alone do not create success. But I do believe that thoughts, and this is all based on my coach training, that our thoughts create certain feelings which produces certain actions which then create results. The thoughts are a big part of it. But if we do not directly tie actions to those thoughts, nothing happens. I love LinkedIn. It is primarily where I hang out the most on social media. And I love connecting with people and posting and commenting and things like that. And if we're not connected on LinkedIn, we should be. So just send me a connection invite and tell me you listened to the podcast and what you liked about it. But I get bombarded. And I don't get upset about it because I understand it, it's part of their work, but I get bombarded with so many lead generation experts or people like, you know, hey, John, do you want a seven-figure coaching business right now? And yeah, that would be great down the road. But for right now, I am so clear about my own professional GPS and what needs to happen that it's not a thought that I am immediately entertaining 24 hours of the day. I know what I need to do to get to the next step in my business. I am building and creating things in my business to expand my reach. And I love that. But my GPS is set. And so when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, do you want a seven-figure coaching business in 30 days? I'm like, no. It's a great thought. No, the only way I truly believe I'm going to create a seven-figure coaching business meaning I'm going to have seven figures in my bank account in 30 days is if I win the Powerball or some kind of lottery. Now, are there things that I'm doing to help me get there? Sure, absolutely. When we think about taking action, we have to think about whether those actions motivate us, energize us, freak us out, scare the hell out of us, make us question. That's where those thoughts then start helping us gain momentum. I love the work that I get to do with people, especially who come to me and they say, I know I'm ready for a change. I'm not exactly sure how to get there or I get overwhelmed by the whole entire process. And we start breaking things down into small chunks. And we work on their thoughts and their mindsets about these little things. And I had a client recently come back to me and they said, I have momentum. When our actions start creating the results we want, we gain momentum. And Look, nothing is really, quote unquote, ever easy. This is hard work. If you are working a full-time job and actively seeking another job somewhere, you probably feel like you've taken on a part-time job in addition to all of the family responsibilities and personal responsibilities and things that you have. Can you find another hour to apply to a job somewhere or maybe two or three if your process is streamlined? Yeah, you could. Do you want to? That's the other question. Nothing just happens overnight. We've lived too long to understand that. Sometimes it feels like that though. Sometimes it feels like someone just flipped the light switch and all of a sudden something's different. But when we get to build a process that I call a GPS, the things that happen really all happen around momentum. You might think it's a grind. It's a grind that I have to 
Look at jobs on LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, Monster, or wherever your favorite job searching platform is. And it's a grind when I have to go and and network with people and, you know, tap into my network and pull new people in. And it's a grind when I have to customize my resume for each job. And it's a grind when I have to write a new cover letter. And it's a grind when I have to talk to another recruiter who is who just believes that I'm just another person on their their list to check a box and send off to some company and have to go through another 10, 15 minute screen about why I'm the best candidate for the job. And, you know, why are you looking to change or why do you want to work here? And you might think, oh, I just don't want to keep doing all of that. Yes, it's a grind. It is what happens when you tell yourself that all of this is a grind. What would it look like for you if you looked at the whole job transition process and said, it's happening? That every day you go and take a step and do something, the process is happening. Well, I sent a message to somebody on LinkedIn and and it's been a day and they didn't respond. Maybe that day wasn't the day they tend to be on LinkedIn or something personal happened to them or they got caught in a 12, 14 hour workday. Your message is in the inbox. They will see it and they will either choose to respond to it or not. One message should not be the thing that is holding you back from sending another one to somebody else and make a connection. When I help my clients build their mid-career GPS, we talk about things in four stages. It's about preparation, positioning, promotion, and how you show up. And the promoting piece is all about promoting who you are and what you do. And it's coming from this place of value and service. Outreach can be challenging for a lot of people. They may not like actually sending a message to somebody they don't know. Find someone in your network who's a connector. I interviewed somebody last night for an upcoming episode. And one of the things in Dan Nessel's title is he's a dot connector. Love that. As someone who has, and, and, I, and I always say, I am blessed to have a wonderful network of people. I am always willing to help people make connections in some way. If there is somebody in my network that I can connect you to and make it a warmer connection so it's not coming out of the cold, I'm happy to do it. I connected two people last week who share a similar interest. And just putting the two of them together to have a conversation around that interest, but then to open up that conversation about, hey, is there, is there some advice you can give me professionally that might help me get to the next step was gold. And all I had to do was reach out to somebody and say, hey, would you be willing to talk to this person? And the very next day, they found time to make that happen. So if you're listening to this and you know who you are, huge thank you. I appreciate that so much that you guys did that. We get to choose the attitude or the outlook we have in this whole process. And leading with that belief that this is going to happen is going to serve you far better than leading with a belief of, ugh, it's just never going to work out for me. I'm going to be stuck in this dead-end job. What are the things that you're, are you telling yourself? What are the things that when you stare in the bathroom mirror or you put your head on the pillow at night, what really are the things you're telling yourself? Getting momentum happens one 
step at a time. If you took a moment right now, I'm willing to bet that you could come up with several circumstances where you realize that just the way you were thinking about a situation made all the difference in how you showed up and the actions you took and the results you got. So I'm going to give you a recent example. I'm going to let you let you peek into another side of my life here. So I have shared before on the podcast that I am a professional bowler and I just love every single opportunity I get to compete. I recently competed in a uh, PBA 50. It means you're 50 and older. I'm 52. Um, I competed in a uh, national senior professional tournament that happened to be in my area. And the way that the tournament was structured was that there you bowled seven games of qualifying on day one, and then you bowled another seven games of qualifying on day two. And then after that, the field was cut to the top 32 players to bowl another eight games of match play before the field was then cut to the top five for the stepladder finals. And there were 120, 115 or so people that competed in the tournament. So the first day I go into the event and I threw the ball so well, so well. And the only thing was I didn't score great. Um, you know, I averaged about 210 for seven games and it was quote unquote good, but I was about a hundred pins out of the cut to that top 32. And I started thinking about like, well, what did I do well today? And, you know, what did I learn about how the pattern played and, and what I was seeing with my ball reaction and what would I do differently, if anything, going into tomorrow? And not that I try to be all outcome focused, but there was that moment where you have a target in mind, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm going, what do I need to do to get to at least 30 second place? And on day two, I bowled the second shift. So I had a little bit of an opportunity to see how the first squad bowled and what the number was going to look like. It didn't change my game plan in any way because here's what it was. I was going to fully commit to every single shot that I threw better than I did yesterday. And that my thought was that if I did all of these things in my technical and my mental game, that I was going to have a great day outcome aside, that if I got to the end of the day and I said, I threw it well, I stayed present, I made the best shots I possibly could, that was going to be a win for me. I was not going to get myself tied to the outcome. And I promised myself that I was not going to look at the score the whole tournament. The second day of those seven games of qualifying, I averaged just under 230 for those seven games. So about 20 pins more a game than what I had done the day before. And I managed to get myself to 32nd place and make the first cut of the tournament. Hands down, all had to do with my thoughts. My thoughts created certain feelings for how I was going to go and compete that day which then created some actions and a plan and a commitment, and that produced my results. The result was I was just going to be fully committed to every shot. The result wasn't, oh my gosh, I have to make finals. Yeah, it was a nice thing. It was great. Made some money in the tournament, got to make another finals, got some great experience. But my mindset and my mental game I don't think I threw it any differently or that much differently. Somebody did say to me that they said, you know, I thought maybe you were a little tentative on some shots and that I, I took as some good feedback because it was from someone I trust. And I thought, okay, let me just be fully committed. That was no different than the plan I had going into the event. I share this with you because you can take those same things and apply them into where you're at in your job search. If you have a thought, and the thought is, I am going to apply to three jobs this week, 
and three jobs that specifically line to my skill set, don't come back and tell me that you didn't find anything because you just didn't see it. If you said, well, I'm, I'm going to make it a point to network or pull five new people into my network that I don't know. I'm going to send connection invites um, and, and I'm going to get five new people in my network. That doesn't mean you're just sending five connection invites unless you get a 100% response rate. But if you come back and you say, well, you know, the week got really hard. I decided not to do it. I mean, look, unless something major and earth shattering has happened into your life and from someone who has connected with a lot of people on LinkedIn, I will tell you, um, you could send five connection requests in under 15 minutes. So if you don't have those 15 minutes, that is a thought that you have that you are so busy, there is no time for anything else. Listen to what you are telling yourself. You just might believe it. Our thoughts create certain feelings, which then create certain actions, which produce certain results. Amy said it so well in her episode last week, which was, I knew I was going to make this happen. No matter what, I was going to make this happen. And she did. She did because she never gave up on her dream, which was, I'm going to find a new job in my field in which I can go and I can add tremendous value and be of service to that new organization because of my skills and my expertise. Be careful what you are thinking. You just might make it happen. And look, there are people out there and I've certainly read about it and studied about it and you know, law of attraction and those things. And certainly on some level, I do buy into that. I do believe it. But we don't make those things happen solely by thoughts alone. We have to have the actions to back up those thoughts because that is what's going to produce the results. So where are you at on your GPS? Are you actively applying for jobs? Are you just starting to think about applying to jobs? Where are you at? Are you going into another interview? Maybe you're going into that third round interview and you know you're close. You know you are so close to getting that offer. What are your thoughts? Are you saying to yourself, I don't know how I'm going to talk with the president of the company? Or are you thinking, I get to have a conversation with somebody who's interested in learning more about me. And the only thing I want out of that conversation is for me to figure out if I really want the job or not. If I think it's a really good fit. Because never ever forget that when you are applying for jobs, you ultimately get to accept the offer or decline it. It is your choice. They make the offer. You get to decide. So when you're going into that next interview, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts around having that conversation and coming from that place of value and service. What would be one thought you could have going into that next interview that would serve you so well in how you decide to show up? I invite you to think about what you're thinking. It can really unlock a lot. And as a coach, it is some of the best work I get to do with my clients in really just helping them hold up a mirror to where they're at and what they're thinking and how that's helping them get the results they want. All right, my friends, I hope you have a great rest of the day. You got some homework. 
you haven't listened to Amy Landry's episode, you got to the end of this and you haven't listened to Amy's episode, go back to episode 35 and take a listen to that. I promise you, it's, it's a great one. And also, just spend some time this week getting in tune with what are your thoughts in various situations? What are the attitudes you're placing on these situations? And how are those attitudes or thoughts helping or hurting you in your whole process as you build your mid-career GPS? And if you ever want to have a conversation, I'm here for you. All you got to do is find me on social at John Narrow Coaching on Instagram or Facebook. Come into the private Facebook group. You can email me at john at johnnarrow.com or check out my website at johnnarrow.com. It's all in the show notes. Would love to talk to you at some point whenever you're ready. And most importantly, I want you to remember this. You build your mid-career GPS one step or one mile at a time. And remember, how you show up matters. Make it a great week. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to miss an episode, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen. And I'd appreciate it if you would leave a rating and review. Visit johnnarrow.com to download your free copy of the 55-Minute Career Transition Jumpstart to help you start building your mid-career GPS. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrow Coaching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.